Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's episode 88. Can you believe it? We're going back to the future. Joining me this week, as always, the one, the only, the man who walked Europe and said no thank you, Dean Gibson. I, I'm just very happy you didn't go with the bad number joke. So thank you, Will. 69. Speaking of 69, <laughs> no, Dave is here. No, no, <laughs> what? Uh, Long time uh, listener, first time caller, a man whose video why I did not I put agree to hop onto this in OBS. <laughs> so you're not even you're not even visible now. You're oh visible. God, that's I know. Yeah, I joined the call. It's always, you know what? Podcast and that was listeners the... <laughs> can't see him. <laughs> I know. <laughs> sc- <laughs> Shut the fuck up, um, <laughs> <laughs> folks. Are here. Uh, first of all, I would like to say our hearts go out to the UK. For the passing of a gamer today, folks. A video gamer. A I did about right. five minutes of research only to find out <laughs> the queen may have played Wii Bowling. Um, you didn't know that? You didn't know about no, her gold-bladed Wii know. before today? No, not the gold-bladed Wii. She was... So that I looked up, but the... Um, uh, I, William and Kate had given her a Wii in 2008. Mm-hmm. And Wait. She play, and supposedly really? she really liked to play Wii Bowling. That is oh, the I'm most sure. that came out of the crown uh, Good for her. on that Christmas. And I said, so with that aside, folks. Yeah, condolences to England. America. Congra- congratulations to one. Ireland. We got Congratulations em. to Ireland and all the former colonies out there. We did it, folks. <laughs> we did it, folks. Mission accomplished. She's out of here. Can I just say, I, it actually makes me very happy that, like, the overwhelming discourse on twitter is happy that she's dead which i personally wouldn't go that far but i'm glad we're at least having that discussion you know like i get it but like the humanity sometimes outweighs the or the reality outweighs the humanity but there's a nice balance yeah (laughs) i saw someone who asked a very genuine question about it on twitter where they're like hey uh are we mad because the queen did something like horrible or just because like she's a monarch and down with them? Glad they're dead. Uh, Cause like she's, they're like, I'm good either way. I just want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I saw people asking and all of the replies were just the Wikipedia article for the troubles. And I was like, yeah, Ooh, this is rough. And her, and her, is it her sisters or her half sisters that uh, were mentally disabled? So they just pretended they died <laughs> and had them committed in secret for fifty years. Real, real. There's uh, absolutely Kennedy nothing move there. wrong with uh, the monarchy yeah. system, right? right? Yeah, nothing wrong. Uh, Targaryens are back. We're in. Po- Did you actually see? <laughs> this is something I noticed from work. Um, Xbox, po- Microsoft posted a giveaway for an Iron Throne themed Xbox enough leeway for us to have gotten got written an article and put a graphic up only to the links to it are 404 ing now because microsoft took it down because it was like a giant oh, because throne. of the queen <laughs> yeah. oh that was pretty great uh anyways yeah the they're gold did, so. plating it that's why they're, <laughs> they're gold plating it. it um i was trying to think of a good bit i thought about doing a, mem- a funeral but then I realized just playing the national or the Star Spangled Banner. Would be Can you imagine if it was three more days? It would have been nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It would have been payback. Oh, I literally this morning I saw the news. She was not doing well. And I was like, not today. I don't it's, need this. But it's it's been like that for like two years. The chance Will the birthday like, boy is like, don't sully my birthday with the death of a queen. <laughs> Can't believe it. Anyways, we can move on to the actual video game portion of this Queen podcast uh, that we've put together. Um, David, I want you to go first because I want to hear all about the Steam Deck. I got it, folks. <gasps> he's got, got it. it. Oh, he's got a little guy to get out right of his case. He's, he's it out. Oh, my goodness. It's wow. Like not show my work slack right there. Uh <laughs> for things on fire <laughs> no it's not that bad uh but yeah so folks i got my steam deck on camera if it was thursday or friday i was originally one of the q4 folks and then steam was like hey we got a lot of production so like 
some of the Q4 folks, you'll get moved into Q3. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll get mine like the end of September, you know, like uh, in a month. Yeah. And then the next day I got an email that was like, hey, your your thing is ready. Get it. So I got it. And I got it. And the Steam Deck rules, folks. It is nice. an awesome piece of hardware. I have played many games. Nothing too intensive because like most of the PC intensive games I have are shooters and I don't want to use those with a controller even on a Steam Deck if I'm being honest. Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, I haven't played anything super intensive yet. I have played Papers, Please, which has weird controls because it's really made for a mouse uh, with like the touchpad worked pretty well. Not, I wouldn't say I'm a fan of the touchpad, but I, I didn't hate it. Which for a touchpad, I'd say that's pretty good. Where's the touchpad? Is that bottom right under the right analog stick? There's two. There's one under each analog stick. Oh. Oh. There's two. Oh, but then the D pads are to this. It looks weird. It looks horrible. Not that bad. David, Uh, I'm not saying I don't trust you, but the Steam (laughs) controller had very similar reactions. And literally, the moment I picked it up, it became the worst controller I have ever held. (laughs) <laughs> the controller's pretty bad. Uh, it's I don't, really, really I don't, bad. So that's why I'm like... Well, this one still actually has analog sticks, unlike the Steam controller, though. So, like... that's Didn't true. have one? Or no, it was at all? No, the Steam oh, no it was all. in the middle. It was, Honestly, yeah. it wasn't even the trackpads that were the problem. It was that the ergonomics made you hold it, like, palms out. It sucked so the other, bad. The Steam the controller was, like... The Steam controller was like filled with helium. It was so light what? and just very felt light. like a piece okay. of trash. Uh, honestly, I feel like the best way to describe it is if, feel... is if you it hold like a, a cereal pretty, bowl. Pretty if you're bowl. holding, if you're holding like a cereal bowl and the buttons are on the bottom of the bowl, that's what it felt like holding the Steam controller because you had to like it was concave. You had to dip into it so much to touch oh, it. Yeah, so no, I'm there's I'm no glad to hear the controllers are better. It's it's pretty cool. It also has built-in uh, paddles on the back. Ooh. Which the thing I like is that you can push them against the actual handle, or you can push them oh, against the back that's of it. Nice. Oh, so like that's if you've nice. got like depending on your grip, like I prefer to actually use the buttons directly on the back of the console, like there. Yeah. Compared mm-hmm. to on the side. So like it's built in to accommodate both already, which is awesome. Triggers feel good. Everything feels nice. Uh, this thing is great. Fantastic piece of hardware. Nice. The only downside is I think the screen has a weird resolution that some games don't support. It's like twelve. It's like twelve hundred by eight hundred or something like that. So yeah. it's not exactly seven twenty. So some games don't have it. Um, oh, which gotcha. which can run into some like minor issues, but nothing nothing bad. I I love the idea of the Steam Deck, and I I love that it's getting great reviews. It's just I've thought about it. And there is just no place in my life for it because <laughs> because I have my PC and when I travel, I, I actually I don't even take the switch with me when I travel because it's too big. Uh, what? So it, it is. It's too big. And honestly, well, the number one problem that I have with the switch is that you can't throw it in your back. It has to go in a case because of the sticks and the screen. So it's not like the 3DS or even the 2DS yeah. where you can pull it in and out quickly. I mean, that's that's fair. And that's that's true for the Steam Deck, too. It didn't come with the case. I don't yeah. remember if that's because I bought the middle size or not. Yeah. Um, I, so I, I didn't buy the top. one. I didn't buy the top one. I bought the middle one because I was like, I don't need the fancy stuff that they wanted for the top one yeah. for a lot more money. So I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Um, but so far, like, I'm having a great time with it. I play. So I played Papers, Peas with the touchpad. Worked pretty well happy with that i played um into the breach for like a strategy game and i learned i don't like into the breach but it worked well (laughs) it was it was great i I don't like roguelikes that was the main thing uh and i was like well i like tactical games maybe i like a tactical roguelike the answer to that question is no (laughs) no i don't (laughs) uh so what what else i'm playing oh uh upload i not uploaded jeezel i set up emu deck on the steam deck which is basically yeah. steam decks running linux you go into the desktop version linux you install this emu deck thing it's got a ton of emulators built into it it's got retro arch in- integrated into nice. it which means you have basically it's got retro arch and emulation station built in so like yeah. you can run pretty much anything on this thing i haven't i've tested up through like ps2 era games i haven't gone like to see if ps3 works well or not uh there's 
I think they're working on the Xenia for 360 still for, mm-hmm. for Emudex, so that's not ready, but they have a PS3 emulator on there. I just haven't, haven't checked it out yet. But yeah, I played like some GBA games run fantastically. Um, let's see, what else did I play? Uh, so I played Fire Emblem 6, which is like the Japan release only GBA Fire Emblem, and I played a lot of that. And that game is fantastic, uh, but you need the English patch, which is kind of a bummer translation patch so that's been great uh i played and i just hopped into like a ps1 a ps2 uh era emulators and all that stuff ran fantastically didn't run into any framey issues wasn't getting like spikes or anything like it's just running like an actual handheld pc compared to like running stuff on your phone where you might run into issues once you get to like ps2 gen uh so it's been running great the emu deck stuff takes about 20 minutes to an hour to set up probably depending on how familiar you are, you are with Linux and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. Uh, so not too bad. That's awesome. Yeah. I, um, I, I have a steam deck pre-ordered because it was like, we were talking about it and then, uh, uh, sorry on local chat, we were talking about it. And then I had said like, I think I want to get one. Uh, because I like don't want to be I don't have a second computer set up for my work and I don't want to be at my computer all the time when I want to play PC games. And that even, is the main reason I bought it. <laughs> yeah. And even you, Ian, were like, Yeah, that's a good use case. Like you could use it for that. And I was like, Yeah. So I just put in uh a reservation for it. And at the time I put in my reservation, which was in late July, it didn't even give me a cue. It was just like your reservations <laughs> in. And then I, I hadn't checked it between then i don't think i had checked it but when you guys were posting about being moved up i went and checked it and i think no i was still q4 so i had known i was q4 so i'm getting it supposedly in october still through december which is yeah. neat um it'll be fun to check out I, I agree with you ian with like when i'm traveling i i really don't bring my switch unless i'm currently playing something yeah then i would bring it although and, yeah no i wouldn't i wouldn't bring a switch without something yeah. i was actually playing and then on top of that you made me think i wouldn't even bring my analog pocket because i put that in a case i would just bring my my modded yes baby well no yeah i would bring my 3ds <laughs> or i'd bring my modded game boy sp that clamshells yeah and just because yeah. i don't need a case for that even even though i have one it's like it's it's something i would travel with because like you know i'm not going to oh, be totally, m- upset if i totally drop it or something that. Yeah, totally fine uh, traveling with it. My my main like the battery. I I will say the battery doesn't last too long if you're doing stuff that is intensive. Uh, it's very similar to the Switch, where if you're playing an intensive game, you're probably hours. getting a couple hours. Yeah. Uh, if you're playing, you know, if you're playing GBA on an emulator, you're good for like half a day. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You don't need you don't need to worry about it. So like, there, there's a huge range there. Um, trying to think of other stuff. I did play the Aperture Desk Job, like Steam Deck basically the steam deck demo game where they show all the f- new features and stuff. Uh, and as a game, not a good game as a demo for what you can do in like 30 minutes. Pretty good. Um, shows a lot about the steam deck. They have like gyro controls, which I haven't tried out in an actual game yet. So I don't know how they are, um, but they got some cool gyros where like they won't engage unless your thumb is on the analog stick, which is cool. So you can like turn, Ooh. you can easily not have them active at a time. Um, which I thought was a good feature and, and it was pretty handy. Did you uh, uh did you do a Wii U uh thing yet where you use it as the Wii U gamepad? Or the DS bottom no, screen? No, no, I haven't done I haven't done DS or Wii yet. I will at some point do that, but I, I haven't touched that yet. Yeah, I um, saw there were two the thing is like I don't want to be at my computer. That's the whole reason I bought a Steam Deck. You can do it with the yeah. TV. Because even though they haven't yeah, released the dock yet, I, there's all I sorts of third-party docks that work with it. I don't want to buy a dock for it. Like, I just want to use it as a handheld, which is completely yeah, opposite the way fair. I feel about a Switch, which is weird. Because I think this, I will say this feels a lot better in my hands than a Switch. Like, the Switch yeah. Joy-Cons do not feel good. Like, I had to yeah. buy a separate thing to put over my Switch for it to feel good in my hands. Like, I can play like that for 30 minutes or an hour, like, on a train or something, but if I'm played for extended periods of time, like, my wrists are gonna be dead <laughs> from, from how Even bad the ergonomics are. Yeah, the the Switch, I have trouble, like, ergonomic, like, my hands cramp up on it. And then even, like, the 3DS playing, um, specifically playing the, 
the Pokemon White, which is a DS game, I'm using the D-pad, not the stick. So I'm like holding it lower on this hand. And I was like, yeah. oh, I'm really starting to get uncomfortable with this. Like, yeah. I wish I was using the stick. Yeah, um, That's kind of like why I like their that they're side to side yeah. with the D-pad and the analog stick. Because like, yeah. no matter what, you're at the same height level with your, you're holding it. Uh, it's yeah. just yeah, where your thumbs being out. placed. So I, I think it feels great. I, I love it so far. I've been playing a ton of stuff on it. Um, didn't even talk about, like, I also played, have been playing, I didn't, absolutely did not finish it, but been playing Disco Elysium finally on it. And oh, nice. I will say the controls for Disco Elysium, not <laughs> great on the, on the Steam Deck. Really? Um, they're okay. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like the type of game that has demanding or complicated control scheme, it's, you know? It's not that they're so. complicated, it's just that they're wonky, because... Man. The game feels like it was very much designed for a mouse. Yeah. And oh, they don't yeah. use the touchpad, so it's like you walk around with the controller, but intera interacting with things is where it's difficult. Like moving around and stuff, not hard. Yeah. In fact, gotcha. I think that's totally fine. It's literally just like the interactions and like registering things that you can interact with in the weird crpg type manner that it's, it's set up uh sometimes it's wonky but once you if you can get past that you'll be good like i i'm able to get past it at this point like i got used to it it's okay but it's definitely weird not something that like if you're okay sitting at your computer and you don't need to like get away like will and i who would spend all our day on the computer and then we're like please take us away from this monstrosity <laughs> uh i would recommend playing it on pc instead <laughs> um but yeah, it's yeah. great. I I look forward to just playing a ton of crap that I've been putting off because I didn't want to play on my computer. <laughs> yeah, I I like I have a huge list of games that I don't think will necessarily work on the Steam Deck, but I'm like, ah, oh, I could just sit on the couch and play this. <laughs> uh, and most of those are games that I'm like, I wish I had this on Xbox, um, so I could just play yep. it on the couch. <laughs> so like uh, that sort of stuff will be will be nice. Um, and even same thought. Uh, and some other things can you get like gog running or epic game store um i have not tried i think i heard that you can get epic running i, but I think I, i've heard I it as well i don't know that for sure and i i would assume someone figured out gog at this point but i don't know yeah that would make sense um, yeah, it'll be interesting to I've, play around with like i've heard i've heard epic games and battle network with some mm. like hacky stuff put in there but Oh wow, would be good. Or RuneScape. Oh. <sighs> I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's great. I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying it and having fun and you can finally play PC games again. Uh and yeah, don't like, have to be I, at your computer. I bought neon white at release and i still haven't finished it because i just don't want to be on my computer and i <laughs> legitimately love the game it's great and i haven't played it <laughs> um great okay moving on i'll go quick uh pokemon white uh everyone's been watching me play that on twitch it's very fun i'm enjoying it i have uh been leveling up people doing battles catching pokemon uh it's very fun i did figure this out i was gonna message you ian there is a way to trade Pokemon in uh, emulators. So I, I have figured... So if I have a couple Pokemon... There were some that I was leaning towards that, that list you sent me. There's like the S tier, A tier. And they're tradable yeah. to up, to upload them, to uh, evolve them. And I was like, oh, but I, I kind of really like this this Pokemon. But I looked it up and there's a... It's like a Pokemon hex editor that you can like edit the trade and make oh, it come back for you it's probably probably not because enough of those in the list are gettable through the game by normal that you'll be fine yeah yeah i just mean for the there's the timber guy i have who I, has to get traded and then the rug and roller has to be traded as well so it'll be nice to be able to to get their evolved forms and not have to abandon my boys um so yeah pokemon white's been fun and then vampire survivors i've been playing just like i come to the computer i do what are you shaking your head at? Oh, you weren't oh, yeah, shaking your head. You're dancing. Strong um, <laughs> game of the year candidate. Vampire Strong game survivors. of the year candidate. Um, I've heard a lot of. I've heard a lot of good things about. Vampire you got, actually, I've heard it's a fantastic Steam Deck game. And I it's believe $2. that. It's I two dollars. It's two dollars. You should buy it immediately. Yeah, Hang on. You should. 
Um, it's incredible. Uh, vampire. Also, I it's three dollars. Ian, excuse you. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll send give you, you the, the dollar. Extra dollar. Uh, <laughs> add to cart. There's there. Are, the, I, they keep myself. adding updates to that. So even though I played oh, yeah. it a little bit after launch, I feel like I need to go back to it because there's a lot more in it. Now. It's well, apparently early access. So like, I'm not. The, wait, wait. Is this game a roguelike? Not really. Yeah, not really. The but runs don't right. matter. Look, not, right. I don't like. I don't like. It's three dollars. I'll accept it. I yeah, I don't it. like roguelikes either, and this game's fantastic. I bought. Like, it I wouldn't right. call it a roguelike because you're not. You're. You're not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 don't. You... I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. No, but I, I will say to your point. When I first played it, between you playing it, there was already different amount of stuff because I remember you talking about it and me being like, "What?" Um, so yeah. I finally hit a 30 minute run and death came for me. Um, but yeah, I finally beat stage three, uh, to get to stage four. And then I haven't touched stage four at all, but I, I have a like pretty good method going on, like how I get to last for so long. Uh, and I think about like baseball and football, <laughs> no, <laughs> how I get to stay in the game for so long. <laughs> and I, uh, I want to change that up though, because like the stuff's really fun and like my method's cool, but I want to like try out yeah. like the weird guy. I tried out the there's a there's a character now that throws carts, like mine carts <laughs> side to side, <laughs> and you just upgrade them and they always throw side to side and they just get Man. bigger and faster. <laughs> See, that's new since I just, I I just picture a vampire chucking Mario in a cart at people. Yeah, it's and Mario it's, like Mario doing like that's a little new jump since I played. Yeah, they added them. cherry bombs. Um, they added. Right to, uh, yeah, they added so much game. stuff. It's a fantastic video game. Go play it. It's three dollars. Um, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic, and I've been having good. It's, a, it's such a good like because I've been writing a lot and like editing, uh, like on weekends and stuff. So I'll just do that for a bit and be like, Oh, I need a break, but I don't want to get caught up in like an hour long video or something. Let me just play a run. Cause they're always less than half an hour. You can, I think you can beat death at half an hour. Yes. I, I believe I that's kind of the end game is beating yeah. death, but it takes a bit to get there. Yeah. So, um, it's neat. also, is it death or like a different grim reaper shows up at some point eight minutes in, to the level I kept playing. Well, there's there's multiple like small bosses and big bosses, but basically, thirty minutes into every run, death shows up, and it's supposed to be an instant oh, kill. Yeah. But apparently, you can get powerful enough to end it. So basically, every but run max is thirty minutes. I, I was I wasn't sure if you had encountered it because they float in and you can't hit them or anything, and they're just slowly stalking you, and then oh, they yeah. disappear. You never yeah. kill them or anything. So I was just uh, wondering what that was. No, but, I think um, I have killed that guy before, though. <laughs> well, yeah, that that may be. In the dairy yeah. run I was doing, like, I was walking up to him to hit him, and nothing was happening, so. Yeah. I, I was wondering if it was, like, a new thing that got added, or if you had remembered that. Um, but that's it for me. Vampire Survivors, Pokemon White. Uh, yeah, nothing else, really. Uh, there's a motorcycle outside my apartment, if that's what you're hearing. Um, oh, I thought it was raining. Oh, I didn't hear the motorcycle, so it might have been rain. Yeah, it might. Is it raining? <laughs> I don't think so. It is I don't Florida, think it rains so in Florida. Who knows? Yeah. The worst it just state. happens. Um, Ian, speaking of the worst state, what it's have you been, pl- <laughs> uh, what you been playing? I've been playing uh, two games. Uh, I'll talk about the game I've been playing, and then I'll talk about the game that I really want to talk about. Uh, let's talk about Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Uh, this is the release from earlier this year, the Kirby post-apocalyptic game where he swallows a car and a vending machine and stuff. I think it's Kirby. literally called Swallow, no, Mouthful Mode. <laughs> mouthful Mode, just, yeah. It's Mouthful Mode. <laughs> no, I think it's literally called Deep Throat Mode. It's crazy. <laughs> I said Swallow, which I is know. barely naughty, and you just fucking whipped it out. But anyways. Um, I Swallow is barely not <laughs> so this is uh this is a 3d platformer it's not fully 3d it's kind of like super mario 3d you world. got it yes super mario 3d world to be fair those games are all fucking named basically the same thing Wait, so it's kind of like super, super mario, mario 3d, 3D world, 3D world? <laughs> where it's still it's still somewhat two-dimensional levels but you have a 3d space to run around in but it's still fairly mm-hmm. linear it's not as open as super mario odyssey 
And um, basically, you can uh, jump and attack, and then you can uh, swallow the enemy. So you can swallow a fire guy, and then you get his attacks. And then there's things like a car or a vending machine or a giant traffic cone that you can put your whole body over, and you become like the shape of a traffic cone, and that lets you do special attacks and stuff. And there's like collectibles throughout the level, like, you know, kind of like a Donkey Kong Country game. Um, it's pretty good. It's very cute and enjoyable. I just have one complaint and I feel like I need to discuss this. Uh Oh, Oh God. Kirby got him. (laughs) Oh my God. Kirby, (laughs) you got him. Is there rain? Is there a thunderstorm? I think we just found out there was in fact a thunderstorm. (laughs) He was, that could not have been more perfect. Um, Thunder Kirby, Moran, or was it Tempest Kirby? Is that it? The the (laughs) temp like hurricane one. Uh, Tempest Kirby. Yeah, don't tempt fate. This happened to us once before. Oh, he's typing in Discord. This happened to us once before. We were talking about it recently. He said, I'm coming back. Gross. <laughs> um, he said, I'm well, coming back. Not I'm coming song. on back. Come on. <laughs> the comeback <laughs> king. Um, oh, I, I meant to show this off during my segment, so I'll show it off while Ian's not here. My mother sent me presents for my birthday. And she has sent me, folks... A Fortnite arcade cabinet, um, which is <laughs> is very interesting. Um, it, has a, it has a fish dancing on it. Um, but the best part, David, you want to know the best part? I, I do want to know the best part. Guns. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be America, right? Guns. Wouldn't be America. If it and the like, guns. like this makes sense. I mean, these guns are in the game, but like. <laughs> display case for well, guns well if you don't want that i will pay for the shipping to some to zach oh that's a great idea he would love this <laughs> it's like a microtransaction in a box his favorite um, game uh, the other thing know, Fort- she sent me uh was a minecraft lego set which i'm actually pretty excited for um because it looks pretty neat so i didn't know they I'll made be- those but that is a like that collab makes the most sense out of anything I've ever heard. Yeah, it's cool. Like, I don't think I would build this and display it. It's not like a display Lego, like other stuff is. But I would put it together, honestly play with it. And then this goes in my, like, ju- not junky Legos, but, like, Legos to build other things with, you know? Um, So that, uh, that that's interesting. Um, Will, thank you for that. You're welcome, Will. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm all over the place. Ian has not come <laughs> back yet. Well, he uh, tried. And he... <laughs> he tried and failed, folks. I actually, we can take this quick moment. We're not quite into the news yet, but Ian touched on this before, which was the Queen of England's gold-plated Wii, um, <laughs> which was <laughs> apparently THQ made a gold-plated Wii and tried to deliver it to Buckingham Palace, but was rejected by the servants or the, the people there. Um, and then it was auctioned off. Jake had posted this auction off for $300,000 um, somewhere else. But the, the thing I don't understand is, I mean, it's obviously not worth $300,000, but why spend any amount of money to gold plate something to send to the queen? Um, I mean, have you I mean, seen pictures of the Queen places? Half of her furniture true. is gold plated. Uh, it was apparently a marketing stunt. Oh, for big family games. That in- I mean, yeah, I, I games, just also... I clicked on it and I was like, oh, THQ big. Okay, yeah. that was a waste of money. <laughs> yeah, it's not as good as Wii Bowling, everybody. That's... Maybe if THQ didn't spend that money gold plating Wii's, they might still be in business. Still, yeah, they might not be a zombified version of themselves. In they might not have gone out of business and then had someone else purchase their name. Yeah, <laughs> and not even Buy their full outright. name, just THQ Nordic. <laughs> God, I want some of these businesses to go out of business, but quietly, so I can buy them for like twenty bucks. And they- <laughs> yeah, I want, I want Pong. <laughs> Here's twenty bucks. <laughs> um. Okay, let's move into the news. Ian is not back yet, but we're not waiting for him. I'm gonna play the news theme. So, anyone watching this, I'm playing the news theme. It's Zach's extended news theme. Don't get fucking mad at me. 
Here's the news, it's gaming news, we're talking about news, what's up news? But now there's more to the song, so you can sing along, and it won't bore you though, unlike Factorio. Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian, and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local chat. Absolutely incredible. Folks, that was the dulcet tones of one Zach from SaveDay.Man who inspires us all and makes us feel good and is truly one of a kind. Moving on into the news, folks. Um, we've got the organized news here. It's incredible. Amy Hedig's new Marvel game is rumored to star Captain America and Black Panther in World War II excuse me i did not read this before the show what (laughs) okay excuse me i know one of them well i guess black panther's been around for a while like passed down father son that one's passed down i mean captain america was in in world war ii II. like timeline wise it makes sense i'm just surprised do you think they have like, do you think they have German soldiers, German soldiers and Nazis, or just Hydra? Ah, uh, I would assume you can't say it's set in World War II and not have Nazis. Agreed. Like, I don't think you can do that. Otherwise, you'd go like, I guess they could make the argument that like, oh, it's alternate history alternate timeline world war ii where hydra is just a country instead of germany and nazis aren't a thing it's just hydra because they're basically just nazis with a different logo and Uh, obviously i don't think they're gonna have like they're not going full other side and they're like you're gonna break into work camps and free people like obviously that stuff's not gonna be in there but i wonder if they're like like you're saying they're like oh hydra agents were in germany and were blah 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 like yeah. how far they like kind of cover that i feel like it's gonna be what immediately jumped to my mind was like a modern interpretation of what was it medal of honor underground where you were like a resistance fighter doing like undercover missions and stuff i would think it'd be something like that where you're like captain america or black panther and you're doing missions behind enemy lines you're not like frontline fighting yeah. against the nazis you're you're destroying like hydra research facilities or something like that almost I, like like sniper elite style i haven't like played like that loaded yeah, that into a map sense. and like oh so it's like hitman almost like you're loaded into a big map and you're like going around doing marvely missions within the map uh and like taking out officials i'd be surprised if it weren't linear yeah that's true that'd be interesting like historically amy hennig's writing chops have been in relatively linear games so i would be yeah not that she can't break out and do new things and and like wow people and stuff like that but history if we're just based off like her past writing it's been uncharted one through three four which I think it's unclear whether she quit or got kicked off. There was some break apart with Naughty Dog on that. Uh, and then before that was, what was it? Eidos with Legacy of Kane, which is also relatively linear. Yeah. So I wonder, does this game come out? It's Amy Hennig. Does this game get, ever get released? She just cursed at this point to not be able to release new games. I, I'd be shocked if this one didn't come out just because like I, I have not heard so far of Marvel games getting canceled. Um, Yeah, I don't. I don't think I've heard of any of those getting canceled. But still, Star Wars Midnight Suns, which has been delayed for eternity. Yeah, but Star Wars has a much more storied history of bad and canceled games than than the new version of Marvel does. Yeah, thirteen, thirteen, and Ragtag, both of them, and then I'm I'm sure there's some old canceled Star Wars games back in the day too. So. That makes sense. I hear a rumble. Ian Gibson, are you back? 
I'm back. You know, I don't think it was raining when I said it before, but it definitely is now. I, I had a brief <laughs> power blip that also killed my internet for like 10 minutes, but I'm back. Oh, uh, you could not have gone out at a more perfect moment. You were like, you like made your point and went like this. And you just froze with your finger up like this. It was, and you stayed on for so long. Like you were still in the call and still on screen for so long. That's perfect. That's well, how I like to go out. Time. Um, yeah, with a point. <laughs> yeah, so we went to the news. We're in the news now. We're deep in the news. Done with the first story. You didn't even get to talk about it because you weren't here. Um, <laughs> and you missed me showing off my Fortnite and Minecraft birthday presents. So you're going to have to go back and Was it Fortnite Monopoly? I feel, oh, did no. I give you Fortnite Monopoly for your birthday one year? Yeah, I still I did. have it. <laughs> oh, I think you, I think you Will gave it back to me. <laughs> Oh, you got a little mini one. I was looking at those yesterday. <laughs> oh. Has Why? <laughs> oh, never mind. Never mind. That's a piece of shit. I thought that was one of those actual like no. mini working arcade cabinets. Oh, I would have been so excited about that. No, this is a yeah. $2 Fortnite thing my mom found. G granted, she knew it was shitty. She said she just found it in Florida and wanted to send it to me because it's like a funny little desk thing. William, uh, William. Of course it's shitty. You have the technology. You should remake that into a model of an arcade cabinet. I know. I probably just should. paint and some stickers, and boom, you've got a solid little thing going. God damn it! And I can still display my Fortnite weapons on the back. <laughs> or as I suggested, you can ship it to Zach, and I'll pay for the shipping. <laughs> Fuck Fortnite. <laughs> Number one victory ship it, royale. Sh ship it to Elise. That's always just fun. <laughs> That's not, not those guns. Guns. Effort. That's, that's not those guns. That's not worth There's no orange tip. I can't ship these. They could be misconstrued. <laughs> they could be real. They could be real. Um, <laughs> they could be real. <laughs> pew, pew. They're mouse weapons. Um, <laughs> do you have anything to say about this rumored uh, Captain America, Black Panther, World War II love story? Yeah. Um, Wait, you sorry. Know, I'm, it's a love. Did I miss that? No, I made, that, I made that part. Oh, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> I look, I think this is a cool idea because, you know, it's it's the Black Panther we know, but probably his dad or even his grandfather and then Captain America. Um, I just I'm not a big fan of Uncharted, which doesn't make me a big fan of Amy Hennig because like you were talking about, it tends to be very linear and overly cinematic. Um, and I think the other thing is that the Marvel games have not been that great lately, with the one exception of Spider-Man, which was pretty good, mm -hmm. but not amazing. So it's. What other Marvel games have there been lately? Avengers, uh, oh, all the mobile it, games they've been putting out. <laughs> I, I even Miles Morales Avengers was existed. like Miles Morales was oh, just like Miles more of the same. Yeah, it's it's a Spider Man on the fucking box. Of course, it's more of the same. But it was just like my my expectations are very low. And like you were talking about, they're not going to delay or cancel this game. They're going to shove this shit out because they have no standards. Uh, I wouldn't they, say they won't delay this game, but they won't cancel. Th they have no standards for their fucking TV shows or movies anymore. Why would they apply those standards to the video games? So it's just like Captain America going to twerk in World War Two. Probably. I hope Fuck so. This game. I'd be here for so, it. Give me some of that WAP in World War Two. Oh so I am incredibly yeah. pessimistic. I'm incredibly pessimistic <laughs> about this game. <laughs> <laughs> World ass pussy. <laughs> WW2 app. WW2 AP. I don't know. There's, I could expand there. Uh, I'm incredibly pessimistic about this game, and I feel like that pessimism is probably 50% justified. It's fueling you to hate. I don't need fuel. That's my secret. I hate everything. <laughs> I'm always hating. I mean, that's like accurate. Princess? Hate. Mm. Oh. God. Yeah, I should play okay. that game again. You I'm with you, Ian. Though I don't like Uncharted, so like uh, I'm here. With, I agree with you for once. Thank you, thank you. Um, moving on to our next story, folks. Ubisoft is set to announce several new Assassin's Creed games. I believe tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Saturday. Saturday. The um, 10th. Yeah. Ooh, that's a big rumble. Um, Saturday the tenth. Uh, this comes after there were a couple leaks about Assassin's Creed Mirage, which is a new Assassin's Creed set in Baghdad in the 800s AD, I believe. And then also a possible 2007 or 2007, 
2022 remake or 2023 remake of the 2007 original Assassin's Creed, which I would be all about because I love that game. Uh, but also there are five other games supposedly that they're going to announce here. Um, do we announce this show. Um, this says. This just says a peak of the future games. of the franchise. Several new games. The company plans to showcase a mobile title and two major games. Said the people asked not to be named during discussions. The first major game, codenamed Red, is developed by Ubisoft Quebec, set in Japan. The second major one, okay. codenamed Neo or he Hexy? He Hex? H-E-X-E. H -E -X -E. Hex. It's just Hex. Hex, but with an extra E at the end. It's well, they're French-Canadian, so... Yeah, well, that's, that's fair. That's Ubisoft's fair. Montreal. Yeah. And that's supposed to be the Holy Roman Empire uh, revolving that's... around witch trials. Okay. That's pretty and cool. Actually, actually, I don't know why he said... Did he say witch trials? Because didn't, didn't he say it, the, it does say uh, witch trials Inquisition? Like... Didn't he say oh, Inquisition maybe that's what they mean. Point? This, it says oh. witch trials, but actually, if it's this Holy Roman does... Empire, then that yeah, must be... This... This article doesn't say Inquisition. I saw somebody else say Inquisition. I, either way, if it is any way remotely Inquisition-esque, that's a good setting, folks. That's a great I'm, setting. Honestly, I'm here for all three of these settings that leak. Like, the first one is going back to basics Middle East with Mirage, right? Yeah, which, that could be good. I, I want an actually stealth-based Assassin's Creed, which I hope that's what they mean by back to basics. Um, I think was it Turkey that they said it was located in something like that? Baghdad. Baghdad, thank you. Yeah, um, I believe it's only in Baghdad. The way the materials have come out, yeah. it's just in Baghdad. Like, that sounds good. Because, like, I, I like yeah. the old school Assassin's Creed games. I liked Odyssey, but, like, I, Ooh, God, Valhalla, but I didn't enjoy. It's probably going to be racist, isn't it? Like, it's probably going to be a very <laughs> racist caricature of the Middle East. Like, I want real Middle East. I lived in the Middle East for four years. Give me that setting but historical, but now that I think yeah, about it, it's I, Westerners I, making it, so I'm like... Yeah, remember at the beginning of every Assassin's Creed game where they have the black background white text where it says this game was made by racist. a very yeah. diverse set of creators? Oh, yeah, and that's sure, their bio. Totally we're allowed cool. to be racist because we're diverse. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. I forgot about that. Why, why don't we do that at the beginning of our streams? <laughs> We love the risk, I don't, baby. I don't think we can claim that this was made by a diverse set of individuals. What are you talking you about? Can, I don't know. I don't know. Your Ubisoft, they're, they're French and they're Canadian. That sounds no, very our, diverse our to me. No, he's talking about local our chat. <laughs> local chat. I don't think we we've can... got Jesus, who was Middle Eastern. We've got ian who's southern <laughs> racist and I, got me well no i was gonna take us on a tangent but we don't we don't need listen to. give me five minutes i've got no never mind um yeah I, let I me think just say let me just say <laughs> no I, please don't i used to be like okay with my family history but i found out in the last couple of years that my ancestors that i didn't know about owned a lot of slaves and i am not oh, happy about no. it i am not happy <laughs> no. about it <laughs> Wait, which side are you not happy about? That they own slaves is... or they had to get rid of them? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the funny thing is that, like, I, I didn't even directly benefit from it. Ian, because you my, should answer the my question. Dad's, I'm just my... say that. You should probably <laughs> answer the question before you talk anymore. I'm upset that I'm tied to the slave owners, but Thank also, <laughs> like, my dad's, my dad's a bastard. So none of the money and, like, heritage and, like, ownership or none of that w generational wealth came to me at all, period. It's like <laughs> There's a, a giant so gap there. You are upset, not necessarily at the fact that your family has a history I of am slave upset ownership, about that. but the fact that you didn't inherit <laughs> also, any of their wealth. <laughs> 10 out of fucking 10 take, Ian. Look, Way I'm upset go. that it happened, but I'm also upset that I didn't benefit from it, okay? That's <laughs> all it. I'm saying here. Oh my God. It's a lose-lose situation here, dude. It is. It I is. Feel like that's I wish a... I could just... Go back to pretending my family history is like literally from the dirt of Arkansas, but it turns out that's not true anymore. So I feel like there's a key and peel or uh, I think you should leave sketch about someone finding like out their ancestors were slave owners and then trying to go get the slaves back. <laughs> no, no, like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> be like hi excuse me this paper it's like, like reverse like, reparations yeah, we gotta like, move on we gotta move on, on. 
please stop. <laughs> there you go. These are call me. You can have good that job, one. Will. Good uh, stuff. You're welcome. Anyways, I think this all sounds fun. <laughs> um, the Assassin's yeah. Creed Mirage and the other uh, settings sound Neo fun too, and Hex. Like, Japan people asked for until Sony did it first, which is just funny. Yeah. Uh, and Holy Roman Empire sounds good too because I don't think we've really touched on that. I think yeah. Yeah. Revelations had like some touches of, of the Western empires in Constantinople and stuff, but I'm guessing it's like what 13th century Spain, probably. That would be great. That'd be cool. That would be pretty dope. Pretty dope. That'd be cool. Also, give me Beyond uh, Good and Evil 2 news. Thank you very much. I had to throw yeah. that in there. I look, David, I, I don't think you're I know, like Ian, I know. You get Ian, it. Ian, I know. I have nothing against that game. It. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. But he left. He's not even in game development anymore. So <laughs> who knows where that project is? I want it to happen. Uh, moving on here to a section in which David will not be paying attention to the stream uh, because it is great news. Uh, David, uh, actually, in um, legitimate disclaimer that I need to make before we go to the next story. Uh, hello, folks. It. I am an employee of Activision Blizzard. Therefore, the story that Will is about to talk about, I am sure as shit not touching with a 10 foot pole. Uh, and if we talk about a later story that has to do with Activision Blizzard, my opinions are my own and do not reflect the positions feelings or anything of activision they are they are mine so uh they're mine also i'm gonna just be quiet until we're done with the next story <laughs> uh, that was a clean take so i can just edit that out so uh it's not no I'm kidding um i have actually sent you in the chat a uh, hundred math problems so if you want to go ahead and do those um just get those done for me submit them by the end of the episode uh well ian and i uh talk about this um Ian Why Gibson. did you give me a second grader's homework? Oh, because you have a really child? Help. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do math. Oh, some of those are more than second grade. Damn. At least third grade, I'd say. Yeah, I would like... If you throw it into see. MS Paint, you can just draw on it. So, end of stream. Thank you. PlayStation. <laughs> PlayStation <laughs> says, Xbox, you ain't, you ain't sleeping with me girl um it, they do not ex ian gibson tell me all about this yeah so uh microsoft there uh they have plans to acquire activision blizzard king those plans are going basically full steam ahead a lot of the uh, regulatory agencies haven't really had too much of a uh, complaint about it um however the uk regulator the Competition and Markets Authority has expressed some concern over the possibility of Microsoft withholding or degrading uh, Activision Blizzard's content from other consoles or subscription services. And it came to light via PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan that there was a discussion between Xbox and PlayStation over the ABK deal. And they had said that uh, basically Microsoft had promised... Uh, here, let's go to it. Uh, this is a quote from Ryan. I hadn't intended to comment on what I understood to be a private business discussion, but I feel the need to set the record straight because Phil Spencer brought this into the public forum, Ryan stated. Quote, Microsoft has only offered for Call of Duty to remain on PlayStation for three years after the current agreement between Activision and Sony ends. After almost 20 years of Call of Duty on PlayStation, their proposal was inadequate on many levels and failed to take account of the impact on our gamers. We want to guarantee PlayStation gamers continue to have the highest quality uh, Call of Duty experience and Microsoft's proposal undermines this principle so basically sony uh is telling tales and they said you know what uh we have a somewhat of an exclusivity agreement on certain call of duty content and uh, in discussions with microsoft and activision they basically told us that call of duty is only going to be on playstation for another three years after that agreement and uh they're calling foul on this what what are your thoughts on this will um my thoughts are it's 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 like i don't know it just feels like it's like they don't have to give them a deal right am i wrong no they don't have to this is goodwill this is goodwill on the part right. of phil spencer of saying okay we'll we'll renew the deal for three years or we'll continue the deal it, to be clear the the way ryan is phrasing this is that it sounds like call of duty being available period on PlayStation as new releases beyond just the exclusive content that they typically have or timed exclusives. Um, but like, you know, my opinion, I'll hop in here. 
Microsoft didn't buy this, didn't buy ABK to keep selling the games to their competitors. No, this is part of their market strategy. Let's talk about fucking Final Fantasy for years. Let's talk about Death Stranding. Let's talk about all these fucking console exclusivity agreements that PlayStation is more than happy to offer on uh, IPs and series big and small. Like this is part of the fucking deal. I understand Sony, like basically they have a like fiduciary responsibility to scream about this and try and stop the deal in whatever way they can, because it is bad for their business, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad for the consumer or bad for the industry. Um, yeah. It's just really interesting to see details like this. You, you typically don't see details like, like these discussions and exclusivity agreements come out to light. Yeah. And he's not, and Jim Ryan's not saying this only because Phil Spencer brought it, dragged it out into the public. He's saying this so he can further drag it out into the public. Be like, look yes. what they're doing to us. This is your PlayStation. It's going to rot on the shelf. It's going to melt because you don't have Call of Duty anymore. You're going to die. And then the next console generation, you're going to buy the Xbox. Um, listen, yeah. I'm just excited for all of Call of Duty to be on Game Pass. So I can Which finally... he said. He said, you I see know? That quote? He didn't say all of it, but he said, like, he said, Call of Duty games are coming to Game Pass. And as somebody who doesn't want to pay $50 for old games just to replay them, hell yeah, bring it. Yeah, I think someone was wanted to turn into a loop at work. It was like, oh, why, why is this important again? I was like, they're literally making a series of games that barely ever goes on sale, quote unquote, free. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, okay. It's like it yeah. is what I I want I I desperately want to replay a bunch of Call of Duty games. I don't want to lug out two. Four. Yeah, I don't want to install it on the PC. Lug out my Xbox 360. Like I just want to play everything. Install it. We're good to go. Uh, I am excited. Okay, we are done with the Activision Blizzard PlayStation Xbox section of oh, the news man. for now. I can David talk is. Again. That's back cool. how were the math problems i didn't know god damn it i replied to some people on my work slack so there's that oh that was fun did you tell them <laughs> about the problems maybe send them to one of them are you a manager can you delegate please delegate. i'm a product manager so i i <laughs> delegating is basically my job do you have an intern just send that to the intern i don't unfortunately <laughs> no dang no, it I don't. okay can you send what's bobby doing can you uh, folks, moving on to the next, <laughs> next story here. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that many game. levels removed from Bobby <laughs> anymore. I'm like four people away from him now. Hell yeah. Oh my gosh. Co I can shoot him an email that he can ignore. <laughs> <laughs> that he can ignore. Um, sorry, moving on. Ridgeline Games revealed as the newest studio dedicated to the Battlefield franchise um i believe this is run uh ridgeline games run by oh god i cannot speak led by industry veteran marcus leto of the fantastic game that came out disruption uh which is now oh, no longer no. available <laughs> no are you serious <laughs> is that him yeah, yeah. Oh, pretty sure. No, you can fact that check me game on that. was bad. I'll double He's check. also the Halo co-creator. Yes, uh, I mean, that, game, that game wasn't bad, but oh man, yeah, disintegration was really bad. Every time I see his name, that's all I think about <laughs> is disintegration. At least it's not. Um, what is that Cliffy B one that I have seven shirts for? Lawbreakers. Lawbreakers. That game genuinely I... fun. Great packs. Yeah, was Lawbreakers better than Disintegration? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can see that. a lot. I legit have. I think I have six T-shirts for Lawbreakers because every time we played it at Pax East, they would give you a T-shirt, and no one else was playing it, so we you just kept going. Through. When we needed to wait for a panel, we would just go there and play Lawbreakers and just get another T-shirt. So, oh my god, uh, great times. Anyways, uh, they are working on the new. Battlefield games. Uh, I did not read this entire thing, as you can tell by me slightly talking while reading. I, th I think uh, it was a quote single here. player. Yeah, quote here from Leto. Uh, it's a great honor to have the opportunity to collaborate with DICE and Ripple Effect and lead the charge in expanding the narrative, storytelling, and character development opportunities in the Battlefield series. We'll be focusing on a developing a narrative campaign set in the Battlefield universe. 
bring back bad company. Just make bad. Just company bring it back. Again. Just bring back bad bring company. Back. Bad company. Bad company two was so good. Great game. Great game. Yeah. Bad company like, one. Am, so yeah. good. I I want to be excited about this because you've got a Halo co creator. You've got Vince Sampella, who's head of the Battlefield franchise now. Uh, you you do have some some good Battlefield single player, like you mentioned, Bad Company. But that being said, Battlefield today is probably in one of the worst states it's ever been. Twenty one forty two. Sorry, twenty forty two was just an absolute train wreck of a launch, and they just have not fixed it. Period. They're they're doing minor tweaks, but it has done absolutely nothing other than piss away what a little fan base there was. Um, so. I again, I want to be very optimistic about this, but even thinking about like Battlefield One and uh, Battlefield Five and the single player campaigns they had in those, I played a little bit of those, and they weren't that good. So, like, I think Battlefield has always been poised to be a Call of Duty competitor, and there are years where it has been better. You know, like Battlefield One versus uh, Infinite Warfare, but they have just pissed away that that opportunity and so uh, i'm hesitant about this it has the recipe for something great something awful or something mediocre which is pretty much yeah. all the options so just wait and see <laughs> are the bad company <sighs> two servers still up i would play some bad company two i i think they are i, I want to play that will i played Message that last me. year i will hop yeah. on with you in a minute i i Car no, Gustav, I like, baby. I have like fifteen hundred hours in Battlefield Two. Like I played oh. a lot of Battlefield. I played in tournaments for Battlefield Two. Oh my god! I it's a great. Love game. Battlefield and bring the... bring back Strike at Carcand. It's amazing. Fuck yeah! Give me Strike at Carcand. Carcass. Give me. Uh, well, they did give us Dragon Valley, so that that one I accept yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah. that one's not as good as Carcand, which I think I think yeah. that's in one of the recent ones. Um, I, I think you may be right too. But oh my god, like I, I love the old Battlefield games. Battlefield Bad Company 2 was a fucking jam. I hope that when they say single player, they mean let's go in the Bad Company 3 direction. Because if they don't do mean that, I don't want it. If I'm being honest, I don't want it. Just go back to basics. Go back to some of your like sort of arcadiness to Battlefield. Yeah. Battlefield really strides a good line between realism and arcade play that i don't think call yeah. of duty strides and it, it is a fine line which i think sets them up for lots of failures which which they definitely have experienced in the past like five or seven years but they've had so many great successes and i just want to, to, oh, 2042 looks so good <laughs> and then i played the beta and i like the first couple matches i was like yeah there's something here there's something yeah. here and then i played a couple more matches and i was like and i was like this is oh broken. no <laughs> this, this is this broken game, this game doesn't function i didn't get into a vehicle last game and now that i did i regret it oh no yeah uh, and then the game came out and it was the beta and you were like oh shit <laughs> glad i didn't spend the money for the full release but yeah like yeah i i love battlefield so much i want more than anything again as someone that works at activision my opinions are my own. I want <laughs> Battlefield to be really good, and it yes. just hasn't been for a long time. I, so, I think three, three slash four was the last time it was good. Yeah, yeah, I, think, I, I would I think say that. One and one and five kind of got there after years of being bad. They were they were okay. It's just it kind of got to this point where the game really encouraged deathmatch. So you could pretty well, much spawn anywhere, anytime. Yeah. It, the setting didn't matter. Everybody had crazy machine guns and it was just like, they're just in this cycle grinder. where they release a broken game and then they fix it. And yeah. I, I hope they finally learned with 2142 or 2042. Fuck 2142 was a different game. That was good. <laughs> it was so good. The type mode was incredible. Mode was great. Uh, but 2042, I hope that was like the final straw that broke their back in releasing a game that yeah. everyone knew was broken and people just didn't buy it this time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope this one actually taught them that they can't keep doing that anymore. 
and that the next one will be a bad company three we'll have a single player mode that's cool Hell, we'll have a yeah. multiplayer mode that's actually like fun and not absolutely busted and not in like yeah. the fun busted way but in the like the game doesn't function way um, yeah. so i hope for that and when that happens i will absolutely join sub pixel on a battlefield stream at 100 yeah, percent i because like, just like looked... just to say it we were literally planning to do 2042 streams and i think i just did one in the beta and then we just completely dropped that we were all prepared yep. to buy that game and play it and it was, I was so gonna bad join we, you, just, yeah. we just turned around we were done um bad company 2 i do own on steam i was actually surprised because i played on xbox i'm surprised i own it on steam and i own vietnam bad company 2 vietnam on on uh pc so we should definitely set that up but i was also going to say the campaign to bad company 2 was so good like it started in that world war one or world war two island and there's like that Wait. bomb yeah. and stuff but it's like blomp, and you think it's like some like alien thing I or something it's just oh, bad company 2 was great, great. And that, that was like, that was like, I don't think it was, I don't know if it was exactly the premiere, but that was a showcase for Frostbite and yeah. all the audio stuff they were doing. Just an incredible game. Was the, that um, company too on Frostbite? I, I think it was. Yeah. I think it was one of the first. And even and, and uh, the audio tech as well. Was it the end of Bad Company 1 where like, oh, the it Russians was, it are was invading and they're like, all the planes are flying over? Oh. Absolutely. It was so good. I love the multiplayer. I love sniping people with RPGs. It was my favorite thing in Vietnam. I'm play Bad Company yes. 2 after this stream. Will message um, me, please, if you do. <laughs> yeah. I will literally go buy it on Steam and then. Actually, I think I have it on Origin. I will go play it with you, like, right now. I, I love that game so much. Uh, okay. The, the we're going to do that. Did you know they have a conical explosion box on their RPGs in that game, Will? Really? You could fire an RPG at someone's feet directly in front of you, and they would die, and you would live. It was great. Wow. My clan mates hated me. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you for just talking about it. Um, <laughs> to the middling news, we say, um, Ubisoft accidentally leaked the Division Heartland. Um, I wonder what's going to show at the same uh, digital conference where they talk about Assassin's Creed. One wonder what could possibly be there. <laughs> yeah, because this was a leak Maybe from the, the Ubisoft are... <laughs> store. This was a leak from their store. Yeah. Didn't this? Didn't the? Didn't the announcement trailer for Heartland leak before that ever came out too? That I mean, I'm Division not sure two? about. Because remember, no, we all Heart, made Heartland's already saying, been announced. Right, yeah. but I think what, before it was announced, that was also oh. leaked as well. And yeah, then they think, announced it. I think it was leaked that yeah. another Division game was coming. Because yeah. I distinctly remember making fun of the Ubisoft original uh, like picture that had come out of it. Anyways, Ubisoft leaked their own stuff. They put Division Heartland up on the store with Coming Soon. And it had, um, what I what I'm looking at here, it had gameplay. Uh, no, I believe it just had some details. There's uh, a PvP VE uh, mm -hmm. mode similar to their Dark Zone or Escape from Tarkov, which is really popular right now. Uh, there's some dedicated PvE matches. This is the free-to-play game in Division that is coming out. Uh, there could be something interesting here. You know, Division is like a solid 7 all the way through. We had some yeah. fun playing it. It yeah. wasn't fantastic. It wasn't awful. So having some of that free to play, I've always been very interested in the escape from Tarkov mode, just not the game itself because the hour I played with it was not super enjoyable. So bringing something like that, but toning it down a bit, making it less try hard and complicated could always be something successful. So, uh, cautiously optimistic, I would say on this one. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, I, I'm pessimistic. I'm not interested in this at all. <laughs> That's yeah, right. I really like Division 1, and I think that was mostly because of New York City and snow and, like, post-apocalyptic city. And then Division yeah. 2 just felt like, hey, we put in another city, and it's Washington, D.C. And, and we didn't change much. Yeah. Not great. But the yeah, set we played a lot cool. of it. We played a lot of it on stream because it was a great game to play with friends. You just oh, hang out. Totally. You don't have to pay attention to it. So. Yeah, yeah, and it did better... I, did we ever try playing Wildlands on stream? Because that game was like no, not great on stream because it I was didn't. frustrating. Uh, yeah. And then actually, I think I just tried to play with my brothers. Versus Division was like a little bit more linear, so you had like yeah. 
like stuff you just to go do, to an area to do and then do a linear mission and then come back out yeah yeah and it was also small like division was small enough to get around where like wildlands was a big map like gta and it just didn't feel like gta um so that'd be interesting i i might check that out I, i've been trying to get myself into mobile gaming a little bit more like like giving it a shot when like stuff comes out um, like when these big tentpole releases where they're like this, like I played the Diablo Mortal to see how it, how it compares to playing on PC and stuff like that. Um, so I'll, I'll definitely try this out when it comes out. But uh, until then, well, I this is not I a mobile do. game. The Division Resurgence. There's a, there's a separate there one. Oh, I'm sorry. Ugh. That's why you're looking at me weird. I thought this was a mobile game. No, division. No, I, I thought the same oh, thing, and then I was reading the last paragraph. That's why you're right. It does say no, the division resurgence, resurgence mobile game. <laughs> um, okay, then Heartland. Screw it. I'm not touching it because it's not a mobile game. I don't want to play it. <laughs> I only play mobile that, games now. I don't know. It depends. It, honestly, it depends on when it hits. If it hits in a lull, hell yeah, I'll give it a shot. I'll oh no, totally. I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. It, it it could be a good stream game. Like remember Fall Ga Fall Fall Gaze. Fall Guys was a good <laughs> Thank you, Luigi, for clipping that. Fall Guys was a good stream game and we haven't touched it since. It it worked for streams and then then we move on. Yeah. Oh, Fall Guys still And it was time I, for the I Queen to move on. I still like Fall Guys because when they add new stuff, like none of the mechanics are that different, so you just jump back in. Like, right. Fall Guys yeah. is still yeah. Fall Guys is great. Um and next we are going to talk about more <laughs> Activision Blizzard content, but something that David uh, has released a statement. No, may comment on <laughs> if he wants to. Uh, hey, Overwatch to be fair, Hero. to be fair, we don't have to talk about this. This isn't that important. Oh, yeah, we so. don't have to. I, I literally do not care. I've never played Overwatch and I never will play Overwatch. Oh. Yeah, they're doing some weird decisions that are questionable with Overwatch 2. Like they've been I doing. will not talk about the decisions they're going to make with Overwatch 2, but I will say I played a lot of Overwatch even before I worked at, at Activision Blizzard, and I did like Overwatch before. Yeah, solid got, gameplay. got to a point solid where like, the balance didn't jive with me, Yeah, uh, and then I fell off, and I have played the recent one, and I'm a little back on when it comes to the gameplay. Again, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, I, I think the balance changes they made are good, but yeah, I have absolutely zero comment when it comes to monetization. Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> uh, and then uh, this cut line here, we'll hit this pretty quick. Uh, Atomic Heart is being published by... Or is that? No. Delayed till the winter. Why is that? It's yeah, also... They, it got a publisher, too. Oh, did it yeah. get a publisher? Okay. I think to they were going to self-publish, but... I'm reading into this a bit because they don't specify it in the article, but they got a publisher, which I think is 505, if I'm not mistaken. Focus, focus on. Focus on. Focus on thing. Um, I would be surprised if that were not because Munfish is a Russian company. So... Yeah, could be. If they were self-publishing, they would probably run into distribution issues, whereas if they go through a publisher, they can probably sell their game in more places. So... Yeah. Not shocked. Unfortunate that they won't get all the money themselves and have to go through a publisher, but like that's an unfortunate byproduct of the times yeah. that we live in and Vladimir yeah. Putin being a fuckhead. They are I, um, um, Moscow based. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Atomic Art is one of the very few games I can think of, upcoming games, that is like a pleasant mystery. Like it is unique. It looks very exciting. I don't actually know if it's going to be good or not. It's not even like a known quantity. It's like, what is that game really going to be? Like it's showing a shooter, but what is it really beyond that? And that's exciting because there's just way too many like sequels and rehashes and reboots coming out that are like, yeah, sure. You know, you can get excited about it. Spider-Man 2, etc. You know, Dead Space remake. But like those are known quantity games. And Atomic Heart is just like every time you see it, it's kind of like Cuphead. You're just like, what is that? That looks yeah. awesome. I really it looks, hope it's just, it looks really Bioshocky with more of a focus on combat, which I'm kind yeah. of here for. But like weird, really weird yeah. level in enemy design, which I'm loving, loving it. Totally. Um, and then finally, Gundam Evolution launches September 21st. What's that all about, Ian? 
It is Gundam Overwatch, baby. It's free to play. They're finally bringing it out. I did not get a chance to play in the betas, but people who have said it's pretty good. It's a pretty good Overwatch clone. So it's just Overwatch, but you're picking the fucking Gundams and then you get to play as them. And I'm on board, baby. Ian, I'm on board. Ian, I love Gundam. This game's going to be bad. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of the Gundam games are not good, but this yeah, one actually yeah, looks okay. Yeah. This one I looks just have okay. one question. Uh, will the heroes be locked behind a battle pass? Do you know? I, uh, they could be. I don't know. Is it Maybe. free to play? It is free to play. Then almost certainly, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that Overwatch too. But then again, it is, it's Gundam. They could make billions of dollars off cosmetics alone. Because that's true. Gundam fans are freaks for cosmetics, etc. Yeah, freaks. <laughs> what, if they had like a, <laughs> what if they had like a Gundam builder mode like, to build your Gundams? Like literally the entirety of Gunpla is just like cosmetics. Like I have kits that are not actually Gunpla. They're just new weapons for my existing Gunpla. Gosh, you're a nerd. Um... Love it. Don't you do that's... Gunpla too? Well, <laughs> yeah, I do. I just like <laughs> yeah, look at all my Gunpla right up there. Look at all my. But room. I don't watch the show. Yeah, so shows, 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 shows give and take. Uh, it depends. Have you, have you seen Iron Blood and Orphans, both of you? No, no I I do need to see that. Oh, one. watch that one. That one's like legitimately good. Okay, uh, Iron, Iron Blood and Orphans is is legitimately good. Maybe I'll watch that. Uh, but I won't do it now because it's the end of the show and I'm going to play the outro so we can all leave. I never did my Pearl Harbor joke. <laughs> Is that a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do it, but my internet never cut out. It. So. Oh, man. <laughs> Anyways, folks, thank you so much for tuning in this week. I've been your host, Will Crosby. Uh, you can find all of our content, subpixelfilms.com. It'll bring you to a link tree where you can go get our new merch. You can go to our YouTube channel. You can go to my Twitter. You can go to everyone's Twitters. Uh, Ian Gibson, thank you for being here. Uh, huh? David, thank you for stopping by. It is, I meant to look up the last episode you were on, and I think it was It was a long time ago. ago. It was um, a long time ago. I've been doing nights for a while on Thursdays. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was bummed. I'm happy that you are back on the Thursday grind and you can be here with us. Is there anything where or where can people find you? Shout outs, all that sort of stuff. People can find me over at Save Data. That is Save Data Team on all of your socials, your Twitch, your YouTube, all of those places. Tomorrow, that is September 9th, I'm gonna be playing Celeste Crowd Control, where y'all can mess with me Oof. while I play Celeste. It is a very fun time. Uh, do recommend you all stop by. Had a great time last time. Nice. That sounds like fun. Celeste, famously a game I played with the sound off. So, uh... What? <laughs> well! Um... <laughs> It uh, has folks, one of the best uh, soundtracks in video games, Will! Great soundtrack. <laughs> Pokemon will be back this weekend, not Saturday night. I actually have to move it. It'll probably be Sunday, uh, but I gotta talk to Ian about it still. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next week. Bye. <laughs>